Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome to St Anne's as we celebrate our liturgy of the 14th Sunday in Ordinary Time. We are grateful for your presence. Thank you. My name is John Goodman and I will be your lector for this celebration. Jesus appointed 72 others to go out ahead of him to spread the good news and upon their return they rejoiced at how the Spirit moved them. Jesus told them as he tells us, Rejoice, because your names are written in heaven. Our celebrant and homilist is Father Mike. Good afternoon once again, everyone, and welcome. My name is Pepe Calvar. I'll be your cantor for this liturgy. Please join me in singing number 746, God of Our Fathers, 746. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May God's grace, his peace and love be with each of you. With your As you know, last week we opened the door to summer, that glorious time when what looked dead now becomes alive, when flowers are continuously popping up, when vegetables soon will be available, the miracle of nature as we experience it once more. Let us also remember that it teaches us that when it seems so cold and empty in our lives, that the time comes when spring arrives. Let us ask for God for that grace to believe in the times when it is cold. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Yeah. 
basement of your Son, have raised up a fallen world. Fill your faithful with holy joy, for on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad because of her, all you who love her. Exalt, exalt with her, all you who were mourning over her. Oh, that you may suck fully of the milk of her comfort that you may nurse with delight at her abundant breast. For thus says the Lord, Lo, I will spread prosperity over Jerusalem like a river, and the wealth of the nations like an overflowing torrent. As nurslings, you shall be carried in her arms and fondled in her lap. As a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you. In Jerusalem, you shall find comfort. When you see this, your heart shall rejoice and your bodies flourish like the grass. The Lord's prayer power shall be known to his servants. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, may I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me, and I to the world. For neither does circumcision mean anything, nor does uncircumcision, but only a new creation. Peace and mercy be to all who follow this rule and to the Israel of God. From now on, let no one make troubles for me, for I bear the marks of Jesus on my body. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brothers and sisters. Amen. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to Luke. And we will use the short form. At that time, the Lord appointed 72 others whom he sent ahead of him in pairs to every town and place he intended to visit. And he said to them, The harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. Go on your way. Behold, I am sending you like lambs among wolves. Carry no money, bag, no sack, no sandals, and greet one, no one along the way. Into whatever house you enter, first say, Peace to this household. If a peaceful person lives there, your peace will rest on him. But if not, it will return to you. Stay in the same house and eat and drink what is offered to you, for the laborer deserves their payment. Don't move about from one house to another. Whatever town you enter and they welcome you, eat what they set before you, cure the sick in it, and say to them, the kingdom of God is at hand. The good news of the Lord. When the Mass is ended, we hear those words, the Mass is ended, go in peace. That seems to be like putting the period at the end of a sentence, and so we leave. But we don't get the real meaning of that phrase, go. In other words, you've been around the altar. In other words, the Lord has come to you. In other words, you have felt his love. In other words, you've been given energy for a new week. Now go into your neighborhood, into your job, and bring the gospel. That's what it means. We've come, we've received, we've been loved, we hear God speak. We're filled up, as it were, and sent back out into the world to do and to be Christ to other people. Felix Frankhunter was a justice of the 
of the Supreme Court, he tells a story. He said he was in the hospital, and there was a nurse by the name of Lucy. And he was so taken by her, her gentleness, her sensitivity, her ability to listen, her caring, her thoughtfulness. As he watched her day by day, he became more and more impressed. One day he said to her, I am so touched by who you are and what you do as a nurse. Tell me, where does that come from? And she simply said, sir, it's from my Catholic faith. I go to Mass, I receive love, I leave Mass, and I try to give love. This man was so touched. He said, all of a sudden, I realize what it means to be sent forth. Now, let me show you the opposite of that. A driver stops at a yellow street light. A woman behind him goes ballistic. She starts pounding on a horn and screaming because she has to wait. All of a sudden, there's a tap on her driver's side window. She looks up and it's a policeman. He orders her out of the car, tells her to put her hands up, puts handcuffs on her, takes her to the police station. She's searched, she's fingerprinted, she's photographed, and placed in a cell. Four hours later, the arresting patrolman opens the gate of the cell and says to her, I'm sorry, lady, I made a mistake, but I'll tell you why. You see, I pulled up behind you while you were blowing your horn, cussing a blue streak. I noticed the rosary hanging from your rearview mirror, saw your bumper sticker and said, that said, what would Jesus do? And the one that said, Jesus is the answer. Naturally, I assumed you must have stole the car. <laughs> so it's the opposite of what Jesus sends us out to do. That when we have come and tasted and felt and been embraced and loved and heard the good news, says to us, the Mass has ended. Go, go, take it with you. Take it with you when you interact with other people. Let them wonder where you get what you get. Let them be touched by my personhood in you. As you know so well, today, tomorrow, and the next day, we are celebrating 4th of July, commemorating the founders of our country as they signed their names to that Declaration of Independence over 200 years ago. Of itself, that declaration was just talk. But behind the talk was commitment. Their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor. We live in our country and at times can be very, very discouraged about our country. Last Thursday morning, I fell into that depth of discouragement with our country. From watching the news day after day, looking at the Supreme Court, looking at the protests, looking at the struggles between political parties, the inability to work together, seeing the crimes on the streets, reading daily of robberies, of people being hurt and killed. I said to myself that morning as I put down the paper, what is happening to this country? I was down. One in the afternoon, I had an appointment. I went into the office, and there was a receptionist there. I introduced myself. And when she responded, I realized she had an accent. I said to her, where are you from? She said, I'm from Ukraine. She probably was about 25, 26. I said, do you have anybody back home? And tears welled up in her eyes. 
my mother, my father, my little brothers. She said, last year, my American husband and I were married, and we came over here before that war. Now, I am so afraid for my family. My mother and my little brothers went to Poland, but they missed my father so bad, they went back to the Ukraine, and they're always in danger. She began to sob. She said, why am I so lucky to be living in a country like the United States? What a wake-up call. Despite all our problems, we are so very blessed. We're able to have food in abundance. We complain about prices, but other countries complain about not having anything to pay for. Those men who signed that Declaration of Independence put their lives on the line, their fortune and their sacred honor. For seven long years, they struggled with another power. Many of those signers lost all they had. Many of them were wounded and many were killed. Even George Washington sank into deep, deep depression during those years. But they didn't turn back. They prevailed. They had their profit, eight of them had their properties vandalized and looted. Francis Lewis, one of the signers, his home was destroyed. His wife was jailed and he died a few, moments, a few months later. One of the other signers, John Hart, was driven from his wife's bedside as she was dying. He died from exhaustion and a broken heart. Norris and Livingston suffered similar fates. And the list goes on and on. And little is said of the women who mothered these men and their wives, who lived by their side of their husbands, during this horrible, horrible time that you and I celebrate this weekend. In the Declaration it says, for the support of this Declaration and with firm reliance of the protection of the divine providence, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. The 4th of July offers us more than just a holiday, along with fireworks, watermelons, parade, fried chicken. It's a time to reflect. For me, Thursday was the wake-up call. We are so blessed despite all our problems. And so as we don't have to work, we gather together among ourselves, we picnic, perhaps. We enjoy fireworks and see the parade. Let's remember how really blessed we are. And as we think of those heroes in the Ukraine, we remember the heroes that brought us the freedom that we have. And we celebrate with such gratitude. May we join together as a faith community and offer the creed. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day 
in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who the Father and the Son is adored and glorified. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. As our Lord sent out his disciples as apostles of peace, our hearts are moved to pray that the elusive gift of true and lasting peace Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For the Pope, bishops, and priests, our shepherds, that they recognize the hand of God and bring God's love and grace into the church as we look towards the future, we pray to God. Lord, hear our prayer. Our young missionaries have returned to us from Philadelphia having experienced the grace of God through kinship. We pray that their newfound joy be transformative within themselves and within our community. We pray to the Lord. Lord For Abigail Silia Massa and Victor Jacob Buck and their family, that the Holy Spirit fill their hearts through the holy waters of baptism. We pray to the Lord. Lord For the communicants of St. Anne's, that we be active participants in spreading the good news and witness the Holy Spirit within our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord For all those who are alone and forgotten, and for all those who are sick. May they feel the healing hand of our God, especially for Helen Riago, Stephanie Perotti, and those listed in our prayer list. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have died. May they find eternal rest in God's kingdom especially for Charlie Howe, brother of Tom and Mary Ann Howe, David Gazinski, nephew of Peter and Pat Gasparini, Andy Agrasso, son of Stella Agrasso, and for Richard Long III, for whom this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. The sanctuary lamp will be burning this week in love and memory of Jean Deeb. Now we pray for the intentions we offer in the silence of our heart. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Father and Creator, your Son is our peace. Hear our prayers as we prepare to offer is reconciling sacrifice. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our offertory song this afternoon is number 747. This is my song, 747.
and high as mine. My country skies are bluer than the ocean, and sunlight beams on clover leaf and pine. But other lands have sunlight too, and clover. And skies are everywhere as blue as mine. Oh, hear my song, thou God of all the nations, a song of peace for their land and for mine. My friends, let us pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father, most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Font of all holiness, make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Save us, save us, save us. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Douglas, our Bishop, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who are against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. My friends, may the peace and the joy and the love of the Lord Jesus be with each of you. Instead of offering each other a sign of peace in this July 4th weekend, let us pray for peace in our world, particularly for those who are suffering in the Ukraine.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lord. Lord, Lord amen. Communion song today is number 579. Worthy is the Lamb. 579.
And let us pray. Father and Creator, your Son is our peace. Hear our prayers as we prepare to offer his reconciling sacrifice. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. This Eucharist is ended. May we go forth with God's peace. Have a wonderful 4th of July. Our closing song today is going to be number 582. Mine eyes have seen the glory, Father Brian's least favorite, 582. <laughs> Hallelujah, his truth.